Today I'll be going over how you can make variables within Power Query. And right now I have a table here which has all of the files inside this folder. I want to filter them so I only show the most recent file based on date created. I want to first show the OG method which isn't very good but I want to show a method to do it without any kind of variables. Which is simply to go up to the filter button here and then sort descending which means I will get the most recent created file here. And then I can go to keep rows and say I only want to keep the top rows being one. And I can then just delete the other information and this gives me the one file that was most recently made. But what if I don't want to do this? I have these two extra steps where I have to sort a table and then keep the first rows. But I could do that in another way, which is to find the highest value within the date created column and then use that to filter. So if I were to make a new query, meaning I want to grab the maximum from the date created column. So I will do this with an intermediary step. And in order to do this, I simply have to click to create a new step. And here I don't want the source, but I want to use the list max function because I can convert this column into a list. So I'll say I want to go into the table source, which is my previous step, and then into the column called date created. And because I'm within the square bracket syntax, I can have a space without needing to do the hashtag quotation mark. Now I'll get one single value, which is at date time. And I can then make a new step, which will then refer to the intermediary step, which I should rename. I want to go back to the source step. And here I want to do a temporary step where I then manipulate it because it's a bit easier to just change M code instead of writing it from scratch. And all I have to do is select a single value to get that as a new step. But when I then delete this custom two step, because there's no point in pointing back to the source, it will now refer to the max date. I'll get this error because this doesn't make any sense, which means I have to go up into the code and change that to be source. And now I'm simply saying I want to filter the source table based on I only want those rows where date created is equal to this, but this is a fixed value and I want to change that to be equal to my max date. And because max date produces a single value, I can do this because it's just saying, well, date created should be equal to this value, which is effectively the same as that hard coded value, except of course, this isn't hard coded and it would update. And this is all fine and dandy, but of course, this means I have this intermediary step, which is pointless because I only use it once. Maybe if you had something like today's date minus 90 and you need to use it multiple times, then I'd want to have an intermediary step. But there's no real point because this code is obvious. It's, it's obvious what it does. It gets the maximum value from this column. So having it as an intermediary step doesn't increase understanding. And I only want to have steps that are either necessary or steps that make it easier to understand what the code does. Which leads me to the last query, which I did not come up with on my own. I got that from my coworker, and I don't think he did it on purpose, but uh, it showed me what to do and it showed me how to use variables. And it's actually a method I'll be using and expanding on in video 59, where I show how to do a query within a query. And it's the same principle, but instead of having multiple steps, you only have one, which means I want to go back to the source here and then all my coworker did was here where I went and filtered on a single value. What you'll do instead is go to the date time filters because this is a date time column. I can then find the option of is latest or is earliest. Do I want latest? Yes, I want latest. So the most recent one. And it gives me this syntax, which can look a bit daunting at first. But if I add some indenting, it'll make a lot more sense. This is a lot less daunting to look at. All it's saying is that I'm making this in a query. I only have one step and that step is called latest. I want to let latest have the value of list.max source date created. And then this step that I actually want to show is then each date created equal to latest. And date created then refers to source because that's the table. So here I'm saying that within this table, I want to create a variable. This is the same syntax you're used to in DAX, where it would say var and return instead, but here it's let and in. And if you wanted to, you could do something like adding an extra step here, where I simply want to say latest minus two. And then instead of latest, it should be latest minus two. And because this is sort of like, well, it is a variable, so it's it comes up with intelligence because it understands what that means. And of course, it's now mad because I'm using date time. So this shouldn't be latest minus, it should be add days. 
there are no rows where the date created is exactly equal to this value minus two days because it includes this uh, time stamp so it's very unlikely so that was a, a bad idea but i wanted to showcase that you can have multiple rows and again i'll be going through that in video 59 so going back to the beginning one other thing i want to show before i show method two of these uh, variables is that with this method where i have the inner query within my function so i have table that select row source and then i create my variable and then i use my variable after the in statement is that i have this funnel icon which shows the user what's actually going on well i'm filtering upon date created and if i then click on it i can see the one value that has been selected so maybe if you set latest it should be uh, the current day so instead of saying list.max i want to say date.from which would then give me the date the 20th of october and then i could do what i did before where i want to say that day minus five so i have five days before the most latest day and then instead of saying each date created equal to latest i would say it should be greater than or equal to latest i would get the files that have been created at most five days before the most recent file but that was method one and then to show method two i'm just going to duplicate this and say that here again i have the inner query within my function but i can put it outside so instead of doing this i would write the code before so again i'm saying that i want to let the word latest have the value of list.max source date created and then i want to use it in this query and there's no real functional difference i still get the same row but here where i have the inner query within my function i have the date created funnel but here where i create the variable outside my function i don't have that so i would use this method if it's important to showcase what you're doing but this would be more clean because you can see the variables being defined first which is the same thing you do in dax where you define the variables before you go in and use them just to showcase where this let in comes from in case you've never tried going into advanced editor all of your queries actually follow this let in syntax where here you'll notice that i have the four steps here and i have four steps here where i have a comma after every step except for the last one so it's saying allow source to have this value allow sorted rows to have that value and so on and so on and then it's saying finally i want to show only this last step meaning when you print this into a worksheet or when you load it into the data model this is the only actual step that gets loaded meaning these are actually sort of variables in the same way i used variables in these queries these steps are actually variables and only the last one actually gets printed i think that makes it easier to understand what's going on with variables because each actual step is a variable and this also explains in a power query it's called a lazy evaluator because if i have a step that isn't used in the later steps then it just doesn't get calculated so i could have a step here called uh, calculate rows before i remove duplicates and one after but if i never use it in this last step if i follow up the chain then it will never get calculated when you actually update the code but it will get calculated when you go in and look at the steps but that was a bit of a side dragging anyway if i then go down here and show what the code looks like when you have this inner query it looks like this and if i then do some indenting to make it easier to understand i still say that i want to let source have this value and i want to say filtered rows i want that to have this value but then it's actually more complicated because i have this variable inside and actually i want that to be like this i'm saying source go into this table and then allow this variable to be defined and then i want to use it right out and you'll also notice this let let in in syntax if you create your own functions because it does the same thing and this is how you end up using variables inside of a function well i should call it parameters because that's what power query calls it which i won't be going into right now but i've done that in other videos if you want to look at that so yep 